And sometimes the worst sins of all lead us to a place where we feel so remorseful, so remorseful, that we come crying back to God like little babies. There's three types of sin generally categorized. One is called chait, one is called avon, and one which is called pesha. Chait, avon, pesha. What's the difference between chait, avon, and pesha? Chait is unintentional sin. Now, what does it mean unintentional? Does unintentional means I tripped and my I hit the light switch with my nose on Shabbos and the light <laughs> turned off? No, that's nothing at all. That's I didn't. That's not even attributed to me. It's total happenstance accident we don't mean that kind of accident we mean that i didn't act willfully but i didn't know it was a sin i did it with full intent to do it i just didn't know it was a sin so for example if i turned on or off the light on shabbos intending to turn that light on or off but i either didn't know that was forbidden on shabbos or i didn't know it was shabbos you know you wake up in the morning you're groggy you're sleepy still you walk into the bathroom you play with the light switch and then you realize, oh, it's Shabbos, whoopsies. You intentionally did the lights, you just forgot it was Shabbos. So that's chait, that's a low level of sin. Maybe. <laughs> then comes avon is the middle. Avon is intentional sin. I did it, the act willfully and I knew it was wrong, but my motivation for doing it is that I had a temptation. I was tempted to do so. My Yetzirah was calling me and it said, do this, it'll be so rewarding. You'll enjoy it. You'll thank me later. Just do it. It'll be good. You have a sort of a motivation to do it, knowing that it's wrong, but your whatever the temptation is overrides your uh, better sensibility not to do it. That's avon. It's willful, knowing, sin. And then pesha is like the worst. Pesha is that my motivation for doing so is not because... I stand to gain from it, but rather because I desire to break the will of God. God commanded it, I shall defy him. That's Pesha. My intent is to defy the command of God. In the middle zone that we described, I don't really want to defy God. I just, I just have a really good reason for doing this thing that's wrong. And that's guiding my action right now. We ask for Selicha. This form of forgiveness. Selach, Rav Schwab relates to the word Tzilach with a Tzadi, the letter Tzadi. And when we talk about Tzilach with a Tzadi, usually we think of the word Hatzlacha, which means success. Aside from what it means success, it's used as a word that means to pass over or pass through. Like it's used when they go through the Jordan. It's a Tzalchu. They tread through the middle of the waters, pass through. When it talks about the Spirit of God coming over someone, this is Vatitzlach, Allah of Ruach Hashem, the Spirit of God came on him. So if you look in the commentaries there, it says like, passed over him. So when we sang to God, Salach Lanu, he says it means that God should overlook these acts. He should just kind of pass over them and disregard them. Mechal means to mitigate the severity of the sin. We ask for mechila, and we know that means forgiveness. We're asking God to mitigate our sins. In what way? A person who does a certain level of teshuva, it says, zedonot na'asim kish gagot. His zedonot, his willful sins, become shgagot, become unwitting sins, like the level of chet regard them as not knowing any better, even though we had our wits about us. But we want to kind of say, we're dumb. What were we really thinking? What do we know? Regard it as like we didn't know any better. Treat it as a lower level sin. And then once you get to the lower level, overlook it. A person who does teshuva on a, on a, on a different, on a higher level than that, it's his, his sins become merits for him. His sins become merits for him because... Sometimes before we can get close to God, we have to hit rock bottom first. And sometimes the worst sins of all lead us to a place where we feel so remorseful, so remorseful that we 
come crying back to God like little babies. I'm so, I can't believe how low I fell. Please, God, can you take me back? We become much more sincere in our repentance sometimes when we really hit rock bottom. In that way, our willful sins can become the vehicles for which we become closer to, to God. And then the retroactively, they can be regarded as merits. We can't do that. You can't go on in the beginning. I'm going to sin and then I'm going to repent. That's something that you can't do. But if it happens that way, we could ask God, since that terrible act that I did brought me close to you, can you regard it as something positive in my merit? We're asking God to kind of reinterpret our act. Either take our, our willful sins down a level to something that is regarded as unintentional and can be overlooked, or bring it up to something that can be regarded as a merit. We're done.